uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Pridashni. Uh, Pridashni, your voice is breaking a lot. Your internet connection, I think it's not uh, quite good. That's why your voice is coming too low to us. Hello, ma'am. It's breaking a lot, Priyadarshini. Uh, can you hear me now, ma'am? Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you start? Hello, can you? Uh, Your voice is not. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Priyadarshini. Uh, I'm doing first year MBA. Priyadarshini. I'm doing first year MBA. Yes, can you uh, start now? Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Priyadashni doing my first year MBS. Uh, yeah, proceed. Proceed. Ah, okay. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about advancements in forensic psychology. So a uh, forensic psychology is an evolving uh, subfield in social and behavioral science that focuses on application of clinical psychology practices and research to legal and forensic matters. So uh, it, it is uh, for the past decades, the uh, scope of the forensic psychology research has been diversified uh, for uh, risk assessments for violent, violent and sexual offenders, personality assessments, and for assessment for uh, workspace and interpersonal violence and many more. We'll be saying about uh, one by one. And first is violence uh, assessment, risk assessment. So uh, earlier risk assessment procedures, they lack the actuarial method. So recently they have uh, combined the actuarial methods with the clinical judgments uh, to give it as a structured professional judgment. So there's a scale called HCR scale, uh, which has been updated as a uh, version three HCR scale. And they have included the practical considerations such as risk management, risk formulation and scenario planning. And this version three scale uh, functions as a dynamic uh, test rather than as a static snapshot. And there are other tools like SAPROF, which is nothing but structural assessment of protective factor. And they uh, try to incorporate the protective factors as well in the risk assessment in that. And there's something called female additional manual. Uh, because most of the offenders are male, uh, the risk assessments have, uh, they remind as a gendered practice. So this female additional manual, they uh, incorporated the risk factors uh, for women as well because those risk factors uh, differ from men. And uh, going on to uh, violence treatment, earlier they used to use this anger, anger management program, but later they found that that was not sufficient uh, to uh, decrease the violence tendency. So the newest trend in the violence treatment is this multimodal program, which aimed to supplement the cross-sectional uh, behavior treatment by increasing the length of the treatment and individualizing the treatment protocol. And uh, going on to the personal uh, assessment, uh, they have uh, greater relevance for forensic clinicians working in criminal. Uh, and there is one test called a uh, projective test. And uh, it is a type of uh, personality test in which the individuals offer responses to various ambiguous scenes, words, or images. Going on to the sex offender risk assessment, uh, which is very similar to that of the violence risk assessment. Uh, here again, they are using various tools like uh, uh, statistic, static 99 uh, and then which has been updated to static 202002. Here, uh, then there are other tests like scales like violence, risk scale, sexual offender, and structured risk sexual offender and uh, uh, assessment. And uh, they have found that there are uh, actually major, three major constructs that were predictive of the sexual recidivism. So these constructs has to be considered in all these tests they have to use. Those three are persistent paraphilic or pedophilic sexual interests, Youthful aggression directed towards stranger and gender criminality. Then uh, moving on uh, to the Drexel uh, Drexel uh, Reentry Project. The main function is to act. The main function of this project is to act as a rehabilitation and reintegration program. The goal was to reduce the risk of future criminal offenders by addressing their behavioral health needs. And then there is something called mental health code. Uh, quote, uh, their goal is to, uh, I mean, they revolve around the well-being of the mentally ill individual in terms of handling them separately, and they also provide some special court monitoring for them. Um, then going on to criminal profiling, this criminal profiling refers to the process in which the nature of a crime is used to make interferences about the personality and other characteristic of the offender. 
so in this also there are various advancements and uh, they now uh, they are using this multi dimensional scaling uh, it is a term for a set of mathematical techniques that is used to explore the underlying structures in the data sets and then going on uh, to biomarkers uh, there are various biomarkers that have been used like a uh, heart rate variability and skin conductance that can be useful in assessing and uh, for the treatment of the forensic patients who act on impulse and have lower levels of self control and interoceptive awareness and then there is virtual reality this virtual reality could be used for various neuropsychological neurophysi- uh, assessments like cognitive emotional and behavioral response in a realistic context then there is bos which is brain electrical oscillation signature uh, this system taps into the experiential memory but not the conceptual memory so it assists in uh, identifying the suspect with the supporting scientific facts so i would like to conclude by telling this the importance of this empirical investigation in forensic psychology should not be understated as the concept of forensic assessment and treatment are both new to the field and have substantial human implications for offenders and the general public thank you thank you everyone